Muscimol is the principal psychoactive component in Amanita muscaria mushrooms. Ebotenic acid also can serve as a prodrug via decarboxylation. This synthesis of muscimol was done in 1992 by Peverello and Verassi, and a few retrosynthetic steps takes the target molecule back to this intermediate, and the centerpiece of the synthesis is this 1,3 dipolar cycloaddition between a nitrile oxide and an alkene. The nitrile oxide was generated in situ from dibromoformaldoxime, and whilst this is introduced as the reagent used in the paper, that could almost certainly have started as glyoxylic acid. So going back to the simplest starting materials, the first step would be the condensation of hydroxylamine with the aldehyde group in a mechanism that isn't particularly interesting, so we'll skip it. Oxygen provides the electronic push for the molecule to react with bromine. After the first bromination, a proton is lost, and after the second bromination, a decarboxylation returns this nitroso-looking compound into an oxime. Now, when the reaction was carried out, potassium bicarbonate was used to generate the nitrile oxide. The bicarbonate anion will deprotonate the nitrile oxide and generate an oxyanion. And whilst these electrons don't do anything directly, they do enhance the activity of the nitrogen lone pair, which now pushes away a bromide and generates the nitrile oxide. This is known as the alpha effect, and essentially the increased charge density on the oxygen it raises the energy of the nitrogen lone pair and enhances its activity. The nitrile oxide then reacts with 2,3-dichloro-1-propene in the 2 plus 3 cycloaddition. The intermediate isn't quite aromatic yet, but the oxygen can push away a chloride ion, and then the loss of a proton will generate the isoxazole aromatic ring. We should give some thought to the regioselectivity of this reaction, because there's a second equally plausible transition structure we could draw, which would give us an isoxazole with a different regiochemistry. There are a couple of reasons you might convince yourself why the reaction happens this particular way round. Maybe there's a steric clash between the chloride and an admittedly large bromine atom, or perhaps the inductive effect of chloride renders one end of the double bond more electrophilic and prone to attack by the oxyanion. Essentially, unless you want to get into some very serious quantum mechanical orbital calculations, you'll just have to wave your hands and say it's a combination of steric and electronic effects. And even if, as organic chemists, we don't fully understand the precise reasons why the reaction happens, it's still synthetically useful. And after the excitement of the cycloaddition, there are some comparatively boring synthetic modifications to complete the final steps of the synthesis. A solution of ammonium hydroxide was used to displace the chloride and replace it with an NH2 group. Then the bromine was removed by a methanolic potassium hydroxide. Methoxide ion can attack into the ring. The negative charge is temporarily delocalized on the nitrogen, which pushes away the bromine. Once the methyl ether was installed, it was converted to a hydroxide group by 33% hydrogen bromide in acetic acid. And that acid is strong enough to protonate the oxygen, and then a generic nucleophile can come and pick off the methyl group and convert the methyl ether into a bare hydroxide group, which completes the synthesis of muscimol.